we've got uh, 45 minutes for seven different ways of building Oracle applications. So it's going to be the, the, the brief version. And I have a presentation later where I'll just drill into three of them with slightly more detail, but that one's only 35 minutes. So, um, so these, this is the, the, the overview level. Uh, uh, for a long time, I gave a presentation on Oracle development tools, the five ways, but uh, I, I was trying to keep it to one hand, but we're up to seven now, and there's nothing I can do about it. So I come from Denmark, uh, so I'm a big Lego fan. So I've put all of the tools up here because Oracle keeps adding new tools. So I've given up on the idea of stickers. So now, so I can just, as a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, this is outdated because Application Builder Cloud Service is now Visual Builder Cloud Service. So um, let's just um, update it. So. Uh, so now we're up to VBCS, we're up to the latest state. So uh, let's see. So here's the overview. So if you, uh, if you can sort of get lost during the, uh, the presentation, this is, what, this is the overview that I uh, regularly publish where I give the various tools there, um, what, which ones are doing well and which ones are doing uh, less well. And the ones that are doing well, that's Application Express. It's new Visual Builder Cloud Service, VBCS, and it's some part of ADF. Some of it is doing well, some of it, um, some of it not so good, but those are the three that I'll be talking about uh, this afternoon, and there are other tools here that we'll, that we'll cover briefly. So um, this is the uh, TOB overview of programming languages, the latest one from October 2017. And I apologize, it's so sm the reason it's so small is I had to squeeze it together to fit in PL SQL down here. And PL SQL is, um, we're moving forward, like we used to be in the 20th place, now we're in the 19th place. And at the same time, Visual Basic is dropping. So they're just above us right now and soon we will overtake Visual Basic in popularity with our PL SQL. But as you can see, PL SQL development is not really sort of beating the world. Like in this room, we can all agree that it's wonderful, but outside, we were, it's, sort of up, it's sort of a bit uphill. As a matter of fact, we're being beaten by Scratch, which is being used by kids to write animations. Um, so, so we're a bit, PL SQL wise, we're a bit, we're a bit of a niche topic. Um, so about me, um, I used to be an ACE director like Heli and, and Fritz. Uh, you know, there are two kinds of people. There are people who know about Oracle and there are people who are critical of Oracle. And people who are just critical of Oracle and don't know anything, that's the trolls. <laughs> and people who know about Oracle but are a little bit careful about how much they criticize Oracle, they're the, in the tech evangelist program. And people who are, know about Oracle and are willing to tell Oracle in clear terms when they're screwing up uh, are people who get kicked out of the ACE program. That's me. So I was there for 10 years and I enjoyed it, but time to pass. So I've been doing Oracle for a long time and I've been doing this presentation for a long time. So I like, uh, I like um, helping people use the right tool. So I started giving this five-way presentation back in, in uh, 98. Now, can anybody guess which one of the five ways is still in this present, was in that presentation, which is still there? Forms. Oracle Forms, yes. So Oracle Forms was still there. I wrote a book on Oracle web applications back in 2002 or three, something like that. Web Applications 101, and it's out of print. The only place you can find it now is uh, Russian pirate sites, which still <laughs> publish it, amazingly. I don't know if, if they're getting a lot of downloads there. But, um, but I've been talking about these five ways for a, for a long, long time. Uh, I write books on, there are good books on ADF. On the good books, oh yeah, the good books on ADF, I wrote them. Um, there are good books on Apex, so I didn't write any of those. Um, and I, there are no books on Visual Builder Cloud Service, so I'm going to write one on that. Uh, and here is the latest one, the Oracle ADF Survival Guide which is the short, just what you need to know about, uh, about ADF. Uh, and 
um, if you drop a business card in this bag and sign up for my newsletter, you can win this book. So I'll raffle this, uh, this copy off here um, at the end of the presentation. <coughs> okay, so um, we need to figure out which tool we want to choose. So when we want to figure out which tool to choose, there are actually two kinds of tools. There are those that are data-driven and those that are UI-driven. When we build something in an, a traditional Oracle tool like Oracle Forms, that is very much data-driven. If you have an invoices table, you have an invoices screen. If you have a customer's table, you have a customer's screen. Apex is a, very much the same way that you, you run, you start from your data and then you build your UI. Now you could do it the other way around. You could just have designers write beautiful screens and you have your data model which has to be a proper third normal form data model and then you have to connect them. If you're doing a data driven application, your data leads to your user interface. If you're doing a UI driven it becomes much more complicated because your data has to be wired to the user interface in some complicated way, which me makes for harder tools, more difficult tools. If you want to use simple tools like mobile applications, but you still want to do any UI, you would actually need to put in some kind of layer between here, a UI facade of some kind. That means that the mobile application, which can't do sophisticated stuff, it just calls this UI facade on the server, which does all the sophisticated stuff and gathers all the data from various points. So here are the seven ways that uh, we'll be covering in the, next, um, in the next 35 minutes. So Forms, Application Express, ADF, JET, which is JavaScript tool from Oracle, Mobile Application Framework, Visual Builder Cloud Service, new, Mobile Application Accelerator has been there for a while. First, Oracle Forms. There's a statement of direction uh, document that says we're still going to keep working at it. That's what they say. We are planning and reviewing and thinking about a new version of uh, Oracle Forms. So they say there'll be a new one. They also say, uh, by the way, you know, the legalese part. <laughs> and if you, not, nobody reads, well, I used to say nobody reads it, but I actually re read this and I figured out it says, this is not a commitment to deliver any code. So they're actually not promising to deliver anything to us again ever, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> on Oracle Forms, which is special for Oracle Forms, is they're also saying, well, we, are, we have these ideas. It may not be possible to safely include all features without destabilizing the code, which very much tells us that Oracle Forms is, the focus is on, we need to keep this stuff stable. We might build new features, but we are not going to risk the, stab the stability of the code. That's something for a uh, very mature end of life product like Oracle Forms. What we've got in the support timeline is we've got until October 2020, so a couple of years ago, a couple of years away. Um, but there's nothing magical. It's not like Larry said, "Well, we'll give him October 2020, and then it's the end." It's the reason is that it came out Fusion Middleware 12.2 came out in October 15, and the usual time frame, Oracle support time frame, is five years of premium support and three years of extended support. So these are just the regular numbers. When we get a Fusion Middleware 18C or 18, then we are going to get a new release date and we're in all likelihood going to get a 5 plus 3 again. So there is nothing, there's nothing saying that Oracle Forms is actually going away. We've got 2020 and if we would like to pay Oracle more, we can get extended support, which is you know, Oracle's way of saying get with the program because you're just paying more but you're getting the same support. So that's what happens from uh, 2020 to 2023 unless we get a Fusion Middleware 18 in the meantime and which I guess is, uh, is likely with the new, um, with the new um, rollout that they're doing. Reports, 
They say there is a version of reports shipped and nothing is going to happen. So we might, do critical, we might do critical bug fixes, but only critical bug fixes. Like if things don't work, well, too bad. They, they haven't worked for 20 years, so you'll have to live with it. So, so reports is very much end of life product. Forms, still, they're still saying we're planning new features, we're doing new stuff. But reports, they're saying, well, you've got what you've got and that's all you're gonna get. ADF. So ADF has, uh, there are several ways of building uh, applications with ADF. ADF is one of those tools for building complicated UIs that can be connected together UI driven. So ADF Faces is built on Java server faces. So it means that you have a, a JSF file, which is an XML file containing some components. And behind that, you have some, some uh, Java beans. So you have your code nicely separated from your UI. And then it connects to, um, it connects to various business services. But I think, I think a probably 99% of all ADF applications use ADF business components as the, as the data layer, um, as the data layer below, the, below the application. But there's, the, there's a UI layer and there is the business component layer uh, below it. You can build it with JDeveloper or you can build it with Eclipse. If you like Eclipse, the Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse, an Oracle add-on Oracle um, supplementary features for Eclipse, you can also build uh, ADF Faces applications. Business components, so that's one way of building the business layer and it's by far the most popular. Business components is a very productive way of handling all the, the boring plumbing thing about things about creating a Java object that connects to the database. So transaction handling, all of that is handled by these business components. So you just click next through your wizard in GA Developer and you have a basic business component that handles all the plumbing all the, the, connect, the kind of connectivity to the database. That's the developer only. New feature in 12.1 or 12.2, pretty new feature is that you can take your business uh, components and you can publish them as REST web services. So your investment in an ADF application, the business layer, you can publish that as web services and use it from any other tool, which is very interesting because ADF is used in a lot of big places that for big enterprise applications and Oracle has seen, well, REST is the way, is where things are going. For instance, a VBCS application, Visual Builder Cloud Service, as we'll see this afternoon, can consume REST services. It needs a data source somewhere. Oracle Jet for UI needs a data source somewhere. And ADF business components can be that data source. There's also something called ADF Swing, which is for very complicated client-server stuff and has even more components. So it's for building something that actually runs on your device, like a Java Swing application, something that you build and install on your, on your device. JDeveloper developer itself is a Java Swing application. Um, and, um, and it's kind of complicated. As a matter of fact, um, I just took my, my pilot's license and I realized that th this slide actually has an ADF. So this is an ADF. It's an automatic, automated direction finder. So when you Google ADF and you find some av aviation links, that's because it's about how to use this tool. <laughs> ADF Swing is, um, is uh, somewhat deprecated in the sense that it used to be deprecated and now then it's not deprecated uh, and, but still not being used, so effectively uh, not many people using it. You need to be careful if you want to build something. If you're thinking of building something with ADF Swing, it's going to be hard to find people who know about it. Um, it's going to be even harder to find people who know about it inside Oracle support. So, um, so you're, you're a bit on your own. But it's the only choice if you want to do ADF and you're doing client server. Then because it becomes an application that actually is installed on your, on your client workstation. This Oracle Jet. Oracle Jet is sort of a framework, a scaffolding. So, well, it's toolkit. It's a piece, it's a, it's a collection of, of open source stuff plus some JavaScript stuff that Oracle felt was missing. 
So Oracle had a lot of JavaScript developers because they hire you know, young pe people out of university and young people think that JavaScript is cool uh, and, um, and they don't like type, they don't like strongly typed languages, they want to write whatever they feel like, so they write JavaScript and it's a huge sea of code and, um, and it's crappy code and, uh, but Oracle had this, was building all of this JavaScript stuff and they decided, well, we need to sort of streamline these guys a bit. So they decided that the official Oracle way of building JavaScript is Oracle Jet. Oracle Jet means they take uh, some of the most popular open source frameworks. So they just take the latest version of, uh, so, they use, so it would be React and Knockout and various uh, JavaScript frameworks, and they're adding some of their own stuff on top of it. Mysteriously, you know, JavaScript developers who are cool kids, they uh, don't build frameworks that handle things like, um, like uh, screen readers and um, working with making accessibility features that you can read, that your application, your JavaScript application, can, for instance, be used by people who are blind or who are using, using screen readers or various other things. So accessibility features weren't really in the JavaScript frameworks. Now, Oracle is building big enterprise software that they're selling to American companies and they have to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act, so they have to make things accessible. So they have to create a few things to support that. Localization as well. All the cool JavaScript frameworks, they come from Silicon Valley. They come from San Francisco and, and California, and in California they believe that everybody speaks English. Oracle has realized that not everybody speaks English, so localization is another feature that's built in, that's localization features are in this JavaScript framework. So if you're a JavaScript developer, Oracle has taken a collection of the most popular stuff and added the open source stuff and added their own. And what they've built their own is also open source. True, real, open source from Oracle. Now, who'd have thought? The, um, now, the, the, the real proof is when Oracle, at some point, you can download it from GitHub. Now, the moment one of you guys, I'd encourage you to uh, submit a pull request. Like, make an improvement and see if Oracle takes it. Now, that would make it real open source. I haven't seen that happening yet. But, uh, you know, there's always hoping. Mobile application framework. <coughs> so, um, first, uh, mobile. I don't know, when I go to conferences, people say mobile first. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Mobile first. It's like uh, we are build, going to build a road from Stockholm to, to Gothenburg, and we will think bicycle first, because bicycles are eco-friendly. No. And, you know, mobile only? That's even worse. So, so you, don't need, um, you don't need to do things, to, you don't need a mobile device unless you have something that's a use case of two minutes or shorter, or you have a very specific, a very specific uh, case. The UX people at Oracle have researched this a lot, and if you're doing something that takes less than two minutes, people will do it on their phone. If it takes more than two minutes, usage drops off dramatically. So if you have these use cases and your people are somewhere, if you are in a business to consumer space and you want people to be able to see your latest offers, etc., you might have the use case. So I'm not saying it's not possible, I'm just saying that in an enterprise space, we're see there's a bit too much uh, mobile buzz and not really many uh, good use cases. Then if you need mobile, then the question is, do you actually need an app? You actually need something that is built and installed on Android and on iOS devices. Um, well, if it must work offline, you have to have an app. And if it needs to access your, uh, if it uh, needs to access your device features like the camera and the contacts and stuff, you might need an app. But uh, generally, just a web application will do just fine. A web application that um, that can um, that connects to your server. And then you can wrap it inside an app so it connects your server and just gets the HTML it needs to render. Because that's, um, that has the advantage that the application actually updates. I don't know if you look at your, uh, your app store on your, on your mobile device. Mine always says you have uh, 53 download, uh, updates you haven't downloaded. And people don't, don't upgrade their apps, or many people don't. If you do something that's mobile web, you know, when you roll it out, it's out there. 
immediately. Otherwise, you'll have to, have to support old versions of your app for a long time. But now, if you need an app, then Oracle's got a tool for that. Mobile application framework is, a, you build it in JDeveloper. developer, it looks like ADF, so if you're an ADF developer, the development uh, experience feels like, um, feels like uh, ADF. The business logic, you write your business logic in Java, which is uh, very clever. So sometimes, you know, uh, Steve Jobs said, there is no way Java is ever going to run on my beautiful devices. He said, there's not going to be Java, there's never, gonna, never ever going to be a JDK for iOS. Um, so what Oracle did, clever people, they built something that looks just like Java but isn't. So, so you, write, you write your business logic in Java, and then what happens is that Oracle has just implemented the entire JDK, all the classes there. They just implemented all the APIs. So it isn't Java. It's not a JDK running there. You can just run Java there because all the calls are there. So, so you, have, you can actually build mobile devices in Java, which you can't do with other tools. You have easy access to device features. And you can deploy it to iOS and Android, even Windows uh, tablet. They never, they never tried Windows Phone. And since Microsoft has given up on Windows Phone, uh, then clever decision. Um, what, they do, what you do is you build your application inside JDeveloper, your math application, and you press one button, and it calls the iOS, the Xcode stuff, and does whatever it needs to do to build an iOS app uh, application. Or it calls the Android SDK and builds a native Android application. So it's like Xamarin and some of the other tools there that you build it once in one platform in, in your development environment, and you press a button, and you create uh, either an I a native iOS application or a native, um, or a native Android application. So that's mobile application framework. Let's see, uh, Apex or HTMLDB. We got this little toy back in uh, 2004, HTMLDB, and it was kind of funny. You could write little web pages with it. And, and it's kind of developed over time. And um, <laughs> so now we've got uh, Application Express. We got 5.1 back in December 2016. And we're hearing a lot of talk about Apex 5.2, so there's going to be new features coming out pretty soon, probably, or latest rumors was uh, end of this year, so we'll see what, what, that, uh, what that becomes. Apex is, of course, how many have been using Apex? Yeah, okay. I don't have to tell you much about it. All browser-based, PL SQL. Um, Apex is the new forms. Apex, an Apex application is a monolithic database-driven application just like Forms. So it means you have, your you have your data in your table and your UI has very much a tendency to look just like your data model. It's a data-driven data application. I know you can do other things, but most Apex applications, are just like most Forms applications, are data-driven. Most Apex applications are data-driven. It's also, you can extend it with plug-in with plug components but Apex applications tend to be, they solve their specific problem. They're not publishing their logic out to the world, like a Forms application, the stuff you've written in the trigger. That's kind of stuck in there. If you want to have your, some of your business logic accessible outside of Apex, you put it in the database. So the Apex part itself focuses on building the UI, and you can write, um, you can write um, some PL SQL for your triggers, or you can write some JavaScript. So 5.1 got some improvements that you already know. Uh, Interactive Grid was the one that I liked the most because when I was trying to, when I was trying to uh, show people, when I showed people Apex uh, 5.0 before we got the Interactive Grid, I was like, uh, UI-wise, wasn't quite up to scratch. Now with, with the Interactive Grid, it looks like a modern web application, what it should look like. So that's great, we got that. We can do master detail detail and all the stuff that we were, um, that might have been missing. I'm not sure. For some reason, Forms application always had master detail, 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 seven levels deep. I don't know why, but that's the way we built them. And we couldn't do that in, in Apex, but now we can. So if you, if you want to build a poor UI, you can also do it in Apex now. <laughs> so that's great. So here's a slide I stole from an Apex presentation. So this is an official Oracle slide. Don't tell Oracle. I, and. Um, and they're trying to position the various tools. So I was interested because I also like to position the various tools uh, next to each other. Now, um, they, 
sort of like application express. So we got like forms and application express. They would very much like those to be sort of end here. As I'm thinking, okay, enterprise development, Oracle forms doesn't do enterprise development. Um, I'm thinking not. Like they've probably been, they've probably been shortening the other bars a little bit. We've got Java and .NET does cover rapid application development, mid-sized applications, and Oracle Forms does cover enterprise. The sweet spot for Application Express is these fast applications. It's not building your ERP system in Application Express. That's definitely not the sweet spot. You could do it. I was, went to a presentation at, at the UK conference uh, a couple of years ago, and there was a guy who was very proud that he had built an Apex application with 4,000 screens. And I'm thinking, um, yes, it's doable, but was that wise? But, um, but he was proud of it, and apparently it ran, so you can do it. The sweet spot is there. Um, I'm kind of not, I don't really fit into the Apex, uh, to the, the, uh, the Apex community. I'm trying to sort of fit in, but as you can see from the hairstyle that an Apex developer needs, you know, I, I, don't, really, I don't really qualify. So we've got some of these tools, like we have forms, we have ADF, math, ADF, um, Apex. There is generally a tendency that productivity and the intermediation, how much the tool does for you, those two things can't go together. If you write an assembler, the tool does nothing for you, and you don't have much productivity. If you write in C, you get some, you get some help from the tool, and you, your productivity goes up, but it's also the tool limits what you can do. If you go to Jet, you don't have that much help because you're writing the JavaScript, which still is kind of immature, but you have a lot of freedom. As you move upward here, you get more help, your productivity goes up, but there's also more that the tool does for you. If you're building something in Oracle Forms, well, Oracle Forms decides this is how stuff works. I built back in a lot, long time ago, we built a Forms application that uh, was supposed to work like a Windows application. And I think we used every trigger that Forms has. And you can do that, but because they don't, didn't like to go, you know, they couldn't understand enter query mode and stuff. Um, so you can do stuff, but it becomes difficult. If you work with the flow, use the tool the way it's supposed to, you have high productivity, but it does tend to get in the way. It has a specific attitude, it has a way it wants to work, and you have to, uh, you have to accept that. And we got some new tools up here. We got Visual Builder Cloud Service and we got Max Mobile Application Accelerator. It's even more, it's more productivity and it's e it gets even more in the way. It has a specific way of working. It can do only so much. So there's this, uh, there's this concept of, uh, of the, the citizen developer. And uh, you know, it's been around for a while and it popped up recently again and um, so the idea is we can get the business user to build an application. And it didn't work 10 years ago, and it won't work now. If, they were, if, if our business users wanted to build applications, they would have become programmers. They don't. They want to do business. They don't want to program. So they are not going to use these <coughs> citizen developer tools, but we can. And they're very productive tools. They have a lot of, of hand-holding, a lot of low-code, so we, can, so we, professional developers, can use them. We have another tool in our toolbox for small applications where we can have, be very productive and build small applications very quickly. The citizen developer, the business user, is not going to do it. The low-code tool, now, now they've apparently given up on citizen developer, so, uh, so now it's low-code. So low-code tools, that's uh, Visual Builder Cloud Service is a low-code tool. It's browser-based, like Apex. It can build its own tables, like Apex Web Sheets. Anybody here used Apex Web Sheets? No. Okay, but that's because we're database professionals. Like, we like to control the database. But Apex has this Web Sheets feature where you just say, I just need a data element that has these attributes, and Apex will just take care of it. VBS, VBS same thing. So you say, I would like to have a business object. Okay. Which attributes? You have to define the attributes. This is a string, this is date, this is a number. And then Visual Builder Cloud Service stores it for you. So when I saw this, I immediately, hey, where does it store it? In the cloud. <laughs> okay, can I get to it? Yes, yes, through Visual Builder Cloud Service. Can I query it? No. 
Can I write a SQL statement? No. You can use it in the cloud. So it's somewhat limited. We're far out into this intermediation. It does a lot of things for you, but there's also some, some strict limits on what you can do with it. There's a library of pre-built functionality, all these components that you'll just drag in and you'll connect them to your business components. It can use REST data services. So if you have a data source already, because I said, can I, can I connect it to my database? Well, sort of, because if you use Oracle REST data services to publish your table as a REST service, then you can connect BBCS to your REST service. But it doesn't understand tables. Like, it can't do a SQL statement. It, can't, it doesn't, doesn't talk SQL net. So it's all um, either its own business components or you can use REST data services. And it can't build mobile. What it does is it does pretty much the same thing if you say in Visual Build a Cloud Service you want to have a mobile application. It does the same thing. It's integrated with what used to be called uh, Max Mobile Application Accelerator which used to be part of the, or is still part of the mobile cloud service, you get this um, browser-based development tool. So here you have in your browser, like no not, nothing to download. Remember, math was JDeveloper download, you build an application, you generate it out to be an on-device thing. Here you have in your web browser, you drop in some components, you have some, uh, you connect them to some data elements, and you have an application, a Max application then once you have built your application in, in Max, so this is again, so where's my, where does my application live? In the cloud. So it's part of mobile cloud service, so you store it. It doesn't get, it doesn't get stored on your, on your file system. It's stored on the cloud, either in Visual Builder Cloud Service or in mobile cloud service. And then, but because it's in the cloud, it's immediately available. So when somebody wants to run a Max application, they go and install, once and for all, they install the Oracle supplied Max app on their, on their device. And then when you start the Max app, you log in with your Oracle cloud username and password, and then you have all your Max applications available. So what happens is that when you, when you take an applica a Max application and you say, I want to deploy it, what this tool does is it gives you, it shows you a QR code on your screen you take up your you can take a screenshot, you can send it to somebody, or you can just, you know, take a picture with the Max application and it connects and say, okay, here's the R application. So when you want to test something in a Max application, you just get a QR code. There's one QR code for the testing version of it, there's one QR code for the production version. So once you put it into production, you can just send this either the URL or the QR code. You can just distribute it, put it on a website. Anybody who has the Max application, well, snap a picture, log into the Oracle Cloud, and they can use the application. And when you roll out a new version, immediately available, because it's not installed on your device. What's installed on your device is the Oracle Max, um, the Oracle Max uh, application itself. So let's see. We've got ah, oh, we got ten minutes left, so there's time to roll to round it up. Um, seven ways, forms. Apex, been through all of them, so that's good. Let's see, oh yes, so which tool? There's an important part that we need to, uh, that we need to think about here is we used to have one tool and we would build, if we had, went back in the old days when we had forms, we were sort of building for eternity. Right? We were building a forms application, it would live forever, and it does, like they still live. But Many applications today are not built to live forever. And there's actually this concept of, I have this concept of a technology half-life. The time it takes for half of your technology to get replaced. What happens is it takes 10 years for half of your database to get replaced. Some places it takes longer. Uh, but on average, it takes 10 years for half of your database tables to have changed, your database structure. Because your database is about what your organization does. If your organization builds trucks, then there's going to be a table of components and there's going to be a table of vehicles, there's going to be a table of machines, and that is not going to change or change very slowly. And that's what you're doing. Then the how you're doing it is the business logic. The business logic on average changes 
with a half-life of four years. It takes four years to replace half of your business logic routines. But your UI changes today, on average, it changes every 18 months. So every 18 months, marketing comes up and says, we need a new website. And if you're on mobile, it's even faster. It's every 12 months or even shorter. And it's moving that way. So the UI part, the UI is getting replaced a lot very rapidly. But that also means that if we're choosing a tool, if we're choosing a tool for our business logic or for our, or choosing a database, that should be the right decision. Like those of us here in this room have generally chosen the Oracle database, and that's a good choice. And it's not going away any, anytime soon. Might move some of it to the cloud, but the Oracle database is going to be there. Your business logic, you need to have something that's pretty stable for your business logic because it's going to live for a long time. But what you're building your UI in, it doesn't really matter that much because you're going to throw, throw the whole thing away and build a new UI in 18 months. So what should you use? Well, go not to the elves for advice, for they will say both yes and no. And so I will also, of course, say, well, it depends. But, um, but no, we need, some, we need some, some actionable advice. So if you're a manager, if you're making decisions for your, for your company, then if you're building something complex and you have Oracle Forms, by all means, stay with it. It's going to live forever. If you're building something new, uh, I wouldn't build a brand new application from scratch in Oracle Forms today. Probably not a good idea. But ADF, with ADF faces, it gives you all the tools. Oracle has built all their cloud applications, like Oracle Finance Cloud, Oracle HR Cloud, Oracle Project Cloud. All of the Oracle Cloud applications that you can buy are built with Oracle ADF. So it can be built, can be used for really large applications. Medium-sized application, if you have Forms, stay with it. You can use ADF. Or you can use Apex. Apex is one of the sweet spots for Apex is medium to small applications. Simple applications, Apex, you can use Visual Builder Cloud Service, possibly Jet, if you can, if you can write JavaScript. Now, the problem with Jet is it requires a lot of JavaScript. And uh, so it's, it, has a, it has a bit of a challenge because, um, because it takes a lot of JavaScript, but it comes from Oracle. And JavaScript developers don't like Oracle. And Oracle developers don't know JavaScript. So it's kind of hard to see where uh, the, 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 real, the real sweet spot for, for Jet. So that was the manager's view. For the uh, no, 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 where the borders are? Yeah, between the border between, yeah, between the border between the, yeah, 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 I understand French. But I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking, you know, as you can hear, I'm do, it's, it's going pretty rapidly. And I know if I was to speak Danish, you could understand me probably a few words. But with the speed I'm speaking, you would, wouldn't have a chance. So that's why I'm in English. So the border between complex and medium, I would say if you have something that is more than 100 screens, that would be one, uh, that would be one way of, uh, of grading it. There's also if you have more than five integrations, that would also be, if you have more than five integrations, I would also count it as complex. A medium size, if you have something that integrates with 20 different systems, then it becomes hard to do with forms over the APEX. So your integration, like your environment, and the sheer size of the application would be the, my, two main, uh, my two main criteria. So that's the manager's view or the organizational view. Now, as an individual developer, of course, we're not interested in we're not interested in the manager's view. We are interested in the cool job matrix. Now, the cool job matrix shows you what your job prospects are in a specific technology and how cool it is. So, so we want to be up in the cool, we want to, the cool stuff with the good job prospects. So VBCS is it's really cool, but it doesn't have really good job prospects. For one thing, nobody's, nobody knows it yet. And for another thing, it's damn fast. So you'll be out of a job in no time. <laughs> so um, mobile application frameworks, no, it's not cool. Um, the, the problem with MAF and with Max and all of these enterprise application uh, mobile is that we're used to pretty cool mobile applications. People are, do mobile applications. They tweak every little pixel so it's really beautiful. And these tools, they have some limitations. So it does, it's not really cool. And not many people are building enterprise applications like that. We've got Oracle Jet. 
Jet is JavaScript. JavaScript is cool. And JavaScript has some job prospects, though JavaScript and Oracle is kind of hard. Apex, it's cool. It has good job prospects, so that's a good choice. ADF, as if you look at the people, the, the job prospects, people are screaming out for ADF developers. Like there's many more ADF jobs than there are developers. So the job prospects are, are great. Looking around in the Oracle community, however, I have to admit that the coolness factor of ADF is lower than Apex. And then we've got um, all the way to the left on the coolness factor, forms is not cool. But the job prospects are not that bad because forms applications live forever. And Oracle Max, uh, no, it's not really cool and there's not really any good job prospects on that. So let's see, um, yeah. Let's just stay with uh, this one, with the overview. So this is, um, this is how I see the Oracle, uh, Oracle tool um, palette. VBCS is new. It's very good for small applications. So I see that one growing. It's not growing right now, but it has a lot of promise. Enterprise mobile, I'm not convinced that, th that there is a need for it. Jet, well, we don't know JavaScript, and the JavaScript developers don't like Oracle, so not really likely to go anywhere. Oracle Forms is declining slowly, so, but slowly. The number of applications and the number of developers are declining sort of in, in sync, so, so that's, uh, that's stable for a long time. We've got Application Express and ADF, ADF Faces. There's a lot of, lot of, or a lot of jobs there, but it's not going to be a major, it's not going to be a big, um, a big development um, platform. It's a niche, it does some things very well. And ADF business components can be used as the basis for your business logic because it can pu be published as REST services. So that makes very good sense. Right, uh, let's see, references, yes. So there's my blog, uh, you can sign up for my newsletter. If you drop the piece of paper in here, then you're also signed up and you can unsubscribe if you think my, my ramplings are irrelevant. And the winner is Richard Schöholm. Congratulations. And let's see, oh, and we've got one minute for questions. There's a question. So if you go back to your uh, manager slide there. The manager slide, yes. Right. So if you count these, there are four tools that should never be used. Three tools. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, so um, but that, the reason is I don't believe in enterprise mobile. Okay, so, so they're the mobile tools. Um, and and I'm not putting them here because enterprise mobile is a niche is a niche topic. Enterprises don't need mobile. Sometimes they need something they, their business to consumer, and they'll have their somebody who's an expert on it build something custom for them. But the Oracle tools are for enterprise mobile for the, and you know there's the approved expense reports stuff, right? But we're not building them. Like Oracle is coming with them, so I don't. That's the reason that they're not there. Okay, well, time is up, so um, yes, thank you very much, and I'll be here for you.